In this video, I'll be showing you how, with Recollector, you can customize the way your collection is displayed, both when you're looking at your collection as a list, like you see here, or when you're looking at the details for any particular item. In this example, I'll be using my map collection, and I'm running on the PC version of Recollector. The Mac version works very much the same way, and I'll mention uh, any places where there are slight differences between the two versions. Now, one of the most important ways to customize the display of your collection as a list is to control the order in which the records are displayed, the sort order. And if you look at the lower left corner of the window, you'll see the current sort order is being displayed. Currently, I've got Map Maker as my primary sort key, and then within that, Title as a secondary sort key. The easiest way to control or change the sort order is to double click on the heading of any column that you want to make the primary sort key. So let's double click on title. And now if you look at the title column, you'll see that the records are sorted alphabetically ascending by title. If I double click on title again, it reverses and now they're sorted descending by title. All right, let's return to the sort order we had before, which was uh, ascending by map maker and then within that by title. Now another aspect that you want to control in the list is which fields are displayed and in what order. There's no requirement that all of the fields in your collection be displayed in the list. You have control over which fields to include. And let me show you how you do that. From the options menu you can choose field selection. And this brings up a dialog. And on the right-hand side of the dialog are listed the fields that are currently being displayed in the list and the order in which they're displayed. On the left are all the fields that are not currently being displayed but are available to add. And let's, just for an example, let's add height and width as two fields we want to now see in the list. So I'll select them. I'll click the right arrow to move them over to the right-hand list. And I can also change where they will appear by selecting them and then using this up arrow to move them. Let's put them right after title and let's click OK. And now you see that height and width are displayed in the list right after the title. You can also change the position with which a field is displayed in the list by clicking and dragging on the header of a column and moving it left or right to a new position. So let's show that. Let's take region here and put it between title and height. So I click on it, I'll select move left and drop it, and it's now positioned um, before height. You can also change the width of fields by clicking and dragging, clicking, holding and dragging the right-hand edge of a field to get it to be whatever width you want. So let's make MapMaker a little wider so we can see the full MapMaker name, and let's make title be a little narrower so we can see more fields to the right. All of these changes that I've shown you so far are ones that are remembered along with the collection. So if you close the collection and close Recollector, the next time you open that collection in Recollector, your collection in the list will come up in the same way, with the same fields, in the same order, and with the same widths displayed. Now you can also, on the PC version, not on the Mac version, but on the PC version, you can also control the height of the rows that are displayed. You can uh, click on the dividing line between any pair of rows and make it bigger. And this then makes all the rows have a bigger size. And one of the effects of that is that if you have long text, like you have here in some of the titles, you'll see that the text will be wrapped, so you're able to see more of the text all at once. But that's not something that is remembered as part of your collection. It's just a temporary change, um, as I mentioned, available only in the PC version. Let's put uh, the uh, row height back to a single row. Now, one of the things that you want to control as well is the, the font that is used. And the size of the font is controlled off of the options menu. You'll see on the options menu at the bottom you have three choices, small, medium, and large. Let's switch from medium font to small font. And you see that not only did the font get smaller, but because uh, a smaller font needs less height, more rows are visible, so you can see more in the display than you could at the medium font. And let's switch all the way to the other end and look at large font. And 
Now the font is bigger, maybe easier to read, um, but you don't see as many rows displayed at, at once. Now the change to the uh, font size affects not just the list, it also affects the item details. So let's switch to item details. And now we see the display here with a large font. Let's switch back to our medium font, the way we had it to start with, and you see that the display got a little bit smaller. Now, um, at the top of this particular display, you'll see a thumbnail. Well, you have control over how big thumbnails are in the item details display. And that is controlled using a preference. Actually, the preferences you will see are used to control a lot of aspects of the item details display. So let's pick preferences, and let's pick the item details tab. Oh, excuse me, this is actually the images tab, because we're now affecting the images display. And we see here we have the maximum thumbnail size, and it says 240 by 240. Let's make it quite a bit bigger. Let's say we can go up to 400 high and 500 wide. Click OK. And you see now our thumbnail is much bigger. And this will stay in effect until we change the thumbnail again. Now, the order in which the fields are displayed in the item details is under your control and is completely separate from the list field order, which we uh, saw how to control earlier. To change the, the order of fields in item details, you pick item details field order from the options menu. And this brings up a list showing all of the fields, because when you're looking at the item details, you see all of the fields in your database. So let's make a small change here. Let's pick the region field, and let's say we want to position that right after title. So we move it up here after title, click OK, and looking down at the item details, you see now the region field has been repositioned to that location. Now, the, uh, there's a field right here at the top, this image. This is actually a field as well. But notice that the image does not have any name displayed. And the reason for that is because we've chosen to suppress the name for the image field. And the reason I've done that is because images really usually don't need a field name to, for you to know what they are. They are simply an image of the item in your collection. And you can suppress the display of a field name by having that field name be within parentheses. And let's just look at that for a second, go back to the item details field order, and look at the very first field here, image link, and notice that it's within parentheses. And so putting a field name in parentheses um, will get the, the field name suppressed. And you can make that change um, off of the edit menu. There's a choice for making modifications to the fields in your collection. And one of the modifications is you, you can make is to rename a field. So you can rename a field by adding some parentheses around it to get this effect. You'll also notice that the image is centered in the display. And that's another uh, option. We will go to Preferences, Item Details, and notice that there's a checkbox here, Center Thumbnails, when there's no label, which is what we have here, and Non-Compressed. And we'll see about a compressed display in a moment, but the normal non-compressed display is what we have now, and in that case, it will center the, uh, the thumbnail or thumbnails, which is often a more pleasant appearance. Now, the particular font that's used in the item details is also under your control. We've seen already how to control the size, but let's control the font family. Go back to Preferences and back to Item Details, and notice the display font choice. Let's switch from Times New Roman to Helvetica, a sans serif font. And now we've changed the font in the item details display. Let's go back one more time. Now, even though this drop-down list only shows four fonts, in fact, you can type in the name of a font. Any font that you know is a valid font that's present on your system uh, can be entered here. So I'm going to enter the name Lucida Handwriting Italic, which I happen to know is a font that's on my computer. And now we're seeing a very strange-looking font, but nevertheless, uh, 
it's there and it's now being used in the display. It's more for the principle of it that I'm doing it than, than that's a font that I really want to use. So I'm going to go back to my preferences. I'm going to go back to my item details. And I'm going to go back to Times New Roman. Now I mentioned before about, uh, just mentioned in passing, the idea of a compressed display. Right now, in the item details, every field begins on a new row. And even when you have, you know, long fields, they're formatted, but every every row, even when they're short, like height and width, is just displayed on a new row. That causes the display to be fairly long, and I need to use the scroll bar to see all of the contents of this record. But there's an option, back on the preferences, back on the item details, for allowing multiple fields on a single line, a compressed display. And let's see what that looks like. Okay, now we have a quite different layout. Uh, the text is wrapped around the image. Multiple fields can be wrapped onto a single line if they'll fit. And the result of that is all of the data for this record now fits in my window. So if I place a premium on being able to see as much information as possible, I might want to switch to a compact display. This option is only available on the PC version of Recollector. The uh, Mac version does not currently support the compact layout choice. But I'm going to go back now to the uh, normal choice. Well, we've now looked at both the list and at the item details, and we've seen the different ways in which you can customize uh, the display. There are actually a few more options that we didn't look at that are less frequently desired, but the most common ones are the ones you've seen. And so um, I hope you will enjoy playing around in Recollector and getting the display that is exactly the one that you want for your collection.